Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Let me sh I'm going to get some feedback here for a split second, but maybe not. We'll say okay. Still trying to figure out the telegram situation. Did it even work last week? Uh, No, but I got it working now. I know how it's supposed to work now. Cool. So what's up? Hey, y'all. Hey, we've got a bunch of you popping in here super fast. Let's rock and roll. Though you're gonna play us intro with a different song today. What why would I do that? You wanna have a Nagila? I thought it was gonna be like a little, you know, birthday jingle or something. I should have set that up. Happy birthday, Elon. <laughs> Elon, it's your birthday. Someone, someone I actually me, Go ahead. No, someone sent me a video of these like weird monkeys singing birthday like a birthday song. It's like some weird stuff out there on YouTube. I actually just learned a new birthday jingle like song, which is so much better than the run of the mill happy birthday, but I haven't learned all the words yet. So uh, by by next birthday, I'll get you 42. Okay. I'll get this thing down. It's spiritual. It's sweet. It makes you feel good in your body. And like it, it, it relieves that embarrassment that you always get when everyone's singing you happy birthday. Oh, that's nice. I, I actually used to have to sing this jingle at the restaurant that i served at it was like a steakhouse yeah and we always had to like you know it was like happy birthday da, 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 da. like something i forgot all the words but yeah there's some there's some weird things out there well in case you guys are wondering what the hell we're talking about it's elon's 41st birthday so mazal tov and, and happy birthday to the to the big thank you to my bigs thank you um still here for y'all um yeah, we I'm enjoy happy this. to be here with you guys on so, my birthday on your birthday here with you <laughs> so feel free to say hello uh in the chat box there um especially if you are well not especially but and if you're new uh <laughs> let us know um because we want to give you a, a special hello as well and welcome you to the old souls and seekers community uh today we're gonna touch upon um Kind of like a, a a progression in transformation and mindset and like what are these quote unquote levels that people attain reach in their understanding and wisdom and we want to give you maps because it kind of shows you where to look and what to reach for and what kind of work you may need to put in place in your life right now to create these habits and these foundations in your life. Because what we want for you guys, just to understand if you're part of this community, it's not just to transform, right? Like any of us can go out and have an ecstatic experience this weekend, if we so choose. You can go to an amazing class, you can go do breath work, yoga, like there's a lot of things you can do for yourself to make you, you feel good. And when you go home, you know, is that sustainable? Are you applying that in your life? And that's what Elon and I really care about is not just having transformative experiences, but the understanding and wisdom and experiences that one requires in order to have sustainable transformation in their life, to have more fluid relationships with yourself and others, to live a healthier life, to be, you know, healthier in, in your mindset, to be um, honestly more fluid because life is a fucking shit show <laughs> oftentimes and it's not about making life perfect it's about how you get to respond to the way that your life is arising so that you can maximize the benefit of the moment instead of losing time and then repeating the, the mistakes that you've repeated so if you are, are new to the community that's really what this these conversations are about it's what all our education and programs and, and community is here for it's to support you in, in giving you tools and resources and experiences, most importantly, the experiences to create fundamentally a new place for you to live from in your life, for a new perspective to arise naturally without you having to like force some kind of outcome. So if you are new to the party or old to the party, again, please feel free to smash some likes and hearts. Let us know that you're out there, say hello, and just know that you can ask questions. You guys can probably see the comment boxes uh, the comment box there. And so we can see your questions. 
we can interact with you. And so as we go through this, if you want clarification, if you have something specific, um, of course, if we have time, we'll get to as much as possible. So awesome, awesome, right. awesome. Anything you want to say? Let's say hi to some, some new people here. Uh, cool. Who do I see here? Uh, Mary Elliott is new. Uh, I see Sh Sharon. Sh Sharon. I'm maybe butchering that one. Uh, Sharon, which would be really cool. Sharon, Sharon. It's a cool spelling. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are all the newbies I saw. And then we yeah. have a bunch of... And, and, and P.S. guys, if you see your name showing up as a Facebook user in the chat box. Yoav. She's got to be a, a fellow Israeli for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, go ahead. Tell them about the, the link. If yeah, I'm dropping it right now. So guys, I'm going to drop a link for you real super fast. If you want your, uh, if you see your name when you drop in a comment as uh, a Facebook user, that's because we are in a closed group. Um, so the software can't pull your name out. So I'm going to put this link in there right now, that chat.restream.io. If you click on that and you just go through the app's permission, it will then start pulling your name uh, into the software so we can see who you are as well. Okay. Cool. Well, welcome everybody, one and all. Uh, again, just great, great to uh, oh, Russian Israeli. W w welcome to the family, then. <laughs> yeah, totally. uh, you know, interestingly enough, before we dive in, I was uh, with a group of people this weekend, and um, we were meeting them for the first time. And people always ask, you know, like, what nationality are you? Especially because my wife and I have kind of weird, weirdish names. Um, and what was very strange is that I stopped myself from saying Russian and I actually purposely said Ukrainian. And I, I stopped for a moment and realized that this is the first time ever that that has crossed my lips just because of like, you know, the, the situation and everything. I think part of it is like, if you use say Ukraine to someone, they're like, uh, and where is that? Is that in South Dakota or something? Um, <laughs> now, obviously there's, there's, more knowledge around it. And there is this big thing. It's like Russia um, and, and Ukraine sure. is very different. So it was just interesting for me to notice like, holy shit. Now it's almost like we got to make that, that uh, distinction. And then just to give you guys like a, a super side, funny story. We, uh, we run Facebook ads and guy was telling me that he, we had this ad that was wor working really well. And, um, uh, Facebook chose colors and it was like yellow no, I, and blue. I, I still, I chose the colors, but chose them before, before the event had occurred and had not even crossed my mind. Yeah. This was like, you know, months and months and months ago, this thing has been running and the guy's like, all of a sudden there's all these like, like more comments than usual, you know? And he's just like, this is odd. So he goes and checks the comments and people were just blasting this for us. Like, milking the Ukrainian thing and using the colors and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, if this was like five months ago and you walked on the street and you were like, what colors are the Ukrainian flag? If one out of a thousand people were able to say it, that was not obviously from there, I'd be in absolute shock. And now everyone knows exactly what the flag looks like and all that stuff. So just, uh, Interesting side notes. This, uh, this uh, just a, also another side note. This reminds me of, uh, you know, when I was younger, I used to tell people my, my middle name. And this will yeah. probably be the first time I've ever shared this publicly here because I don't really use my middle name. My middle name is, is Barack, like Barack Obama. And, when, and it's, you know, a, a Hebrew name. So when I was a kid, I used to tell friend, my friends that my name was Guy Barack. But then they would be like, nobody had ever heard that name before. So nobody conceptualized what that meant. And they would always be like, what's that B name that you had? So I stopped using it. And then, you know, Barack became president. I was like, oh, that's my name. And everyone's like, no, it isn't. You know, like, you just, you just, you just can't, I couldn't win. So I was like, all right, because I just won't use it again. <laughs> Oh my God. You, you know, Elon Musk is like the best thing that's ever happened to me. And not even from the fact of Tesla, just like he's made Second my state. name a household name. It's a household name. It's a household name. It's a household name. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of today. Let's do this. And of this right. birthday, Ukrainian, Russian, Elon talk. Well, hopefully um, Russia doesn't invade uh, Latvia. So then we, you, you have to call yourself Latvian too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to walk you guys through kind of this, this three stages of um, transformation today. And we're going to kind of talk about it from two different perspectives. Um, 
when we created our Ascension model here, so obviously we do these calls every week. You can come and enjoy these for free for forever. I mean, we have coaches from our organization that come to these calls for free. So um, once someone is ready to kind of like jump in and, and work with us, what we have done is we've taken these three levels that we're going to talk about today uh, and we turned it into an Ascension model meaning that we can actually walk someone through the process of what we're going to be discussing today. So wherever you may have found your way into our home, you're already on one of these levels, right? And so as we're discussing this, what I'm inviting you to is to just sit and allow this kind of information and, and let it kind of marinate over you and just notice where you are in the process and wherever you are in the process. I just want you to realize like you get to acknowledge yourself for being there, right? You know, you know the human mind always wants to be somewhere else. It's like where I'm at is not good enough. Let me get over there, which is fine. And just know that as we walk through this, it's like, okay, where do I find myself on the map? And no, we'll actually work with you and, and share with you, like, what are the pieces that one would need to kind of get themselves to the next one? Okay. So I'm going to describe this in two separate ways, and then I'll have a guy come in and interject this as well. We're just going to start with level one and level one, we're going to speak from a place of awareness. And then I'm going to also map it out on your journey. So level one is in, in the way that we describe it here in the Awareness Effect Academy is awareness is trapped inside the mind. It's like, like, you know, when people kind of start to find it, it's, it's usually they point to somewhere here or somewhere behind the eyes, etc. And as long as awareness is trapped there, which it is for basically everyone, unless you've, you've done a lot of this work, then the world has a certain color and tint to it because the only way that you can ever perceive the world is through these five senses. Right. So if awareness is here, it's basically using your eyes to see, using your ears to hear, using your nose to smell. It's const constantly chatting and talking to you. Right. And this is where people have their first real breakthrough at level one. And that first big breakthrough, which my assumption is most of you have already had, is that this voice in your head that most other people think is themselves. You've already come to the realization like, holy shit. That voice is not me. And that was a really profound moment for every one of us on our personal development journey. I, I still remember to this day when I was sitting there and they were like, notice the voice inside your head. And my voice is like, what fucking voice is he talking about? There's no voice in my head. And then the guy goes, you know, the one that just said there's no voice inside your head. That's the one. And I was like, huh? Right. And then you really start to get the sense of how this thing controls your life. And so when we're in this level one phase, what tends to happen is we are constantly acquiring information. Like when someone, when you have that epiphany, whether it came from a book, whether it came from a seminar, whether you hired a coach or whatever it might be, you remember that moment very, very well. And if you guys do like share what your moment moment was, you know, was it a class? Was it a book? Cause I want you guys to get like how impactful that first moment of awakening is. Yeah. I, it's, I mean, like I, I can describe to you the moment of the day that I got unplugged from the matrix guy can describe it. Like, you know, to the T, like he remembers when his foot hit the, the stairwell, like the heel hit the stairwell. And then this, this light bulb moment went off. I remember mine. I was just driving down the, the highway, going back to this class and literally it was like someone, it felt like I almost went, I was like on a mushroom experience. All of a sudden, all the trees became so bright. I had to pull over to the side of the road and like, I, I thought I was hallucinating, right? So what happens is in this early stages, like the phase one of your growth, this level one phase is everything is impactful. The next book is amazing. That next video, the next seminar, the next, everything you take on is so juicy and so delicious. And it's just like, wow, after wow, and aha, after aha, and you get so excited, 
you kind of probably go out and destroy a bunch of relationships by sharing with everyone. Like, <laughs> read this book, you have to do this program. People, everyone thinks you're fucking crazy. But it's serving you so well. It's like, it's creating so much impact in your life, moment by moment by moment, that you're just, you become addicted, right? And that kind of is that in that phase one practice. Here's where it gets into a little bit of a, a shaky situation. If awareness is in the mind and only in the mind, then guess who is doing all of these practices? The mind is actually doing the, the practices, right? Like people call it mindset work and it is. You're basically giving your mind more tools to view the world through the senses differently. And that's very, very aliveting. And then one other piece here that's really important is in this phase, you switch from this notion of everything is hap everything is happening to like to me, right? Like the world is coming at me and you gain this new level of responsibility, like I am responsible. And then it starts to shift as you go from level one to level two into this place of everything is now happening for me. And can we can we pause there for a moment? Yeah, <clears throat> and I just want to talk to, to Natalie's question. So Natalie said, uh, put it on the screen for you guys. Uh, she's asking, it's a really good question. And I think this this may be a concern for some people that arises. It's like, so when we unhook from the conditioned mind, do we lose senses? Well, the first thing we want to we want to realize is at that location, it's what I wrote. You can scroll through the comments and find it is that in, in location one, you are like your reality is merged with the mind. And so everything in the mind, this narration that's inside that Elon's talking about, this little voice, you're merged with it. And so you have this, you don't see a separation between awareness, what's what's aware, and, and this like dictation, this narration that's happening. And so you're using your five senses as the primary way to navigate reality. By the way, most of humanity is still doing this. So it's not like this puts you in like a, a bad way, but what we wanna recognize is that our perceptive reality and what our five senses allow us to perceive is just a very small band of reality. I could prove this to you, okay? Uh, whether we're talking about sound or light, in either case, we're talking about a vibration. I think with sound, the smallest amount of vibration we can perceive is something like uh, like 30 you know, hertz per second or something like that, all the way up to 38,000 hertz per second, okay? Now, there are obviously vibrations lower than that and higher than that. And, and don't quote me exactly on these hertz, but like, give or take, that's the range that we have. So like, here's the, here's what we can hear. Now, anything lower than that or higher than that to us is silence. Non-existent. Okay. And we've all been in a situation where we thought somebody said our name or we thought we heard something and we turn around and maybe nothing is there or not what you believed would be there is there. And so what we want to re recognize is that when we test our senses against what is real, what you will find, whether it's your eyes, right? Again, we've all thought we saw something in the distance that wasn't there. Same thing again, by the way, with heat or with color. These are just certain vibrations and frequencies and bands that we can perceive. But we know there's there's gamma radiation. We know there's infrared radiation, right? Like we know there's all these bands of colors and things that other animals can see and sense that we simply can't. Does that mean that they're not real? Or does that mean that we just have a band of reality that we're limited to? And so we want to we wanna throw a wrench at our five senses and understand that while they are a tool for witnessing a part of reality, we cannot see or experience or feel the truth of our reality. And again, we know this from, from endless studies now, is that your condition will predicate, your conditioning will predicate how you view your reality, your perceptive reality. I'll give you another example on this just to kind of like hit this home because what we want to do is we want to, we don't want to be like, oh my God, my five senses don't work, but you want to call into question what your five senses are creating and be like, you know what? What they're creating is an illusion. No matter how much I believe in this illusion, no matter how real it seems, it's still not what reality is, okay? So here's an example. We were talking about Russia. These are, these are real scientific studies that have been done. They will take... Uh, like a, a palette of color, let's say blue, and they will they will draw it against the wall, like every sh you know different shades of blue. Now they will put an American, yeah, they will put an American 
uh, in front of that color palette and they say, well, how many shades of blue can you, can you see with your eyes? And let's say there's 35 shades and the American will say, well, I can, I can see 25 different shades of blue. And then they'll put a Russian person in front of these shades of blue. And the Russian person on average will see like 30 to 32 different shades of blue. Why does that happen? Very simply, because in, in Russian, there is more descriptive language for shades of color in blue than there is in English. Let that sink in for a moment. There's more descriptive language in Russian for colors than there is in English. And so to the eye, literally, in its reality, it will see more or less colors based on the language that it has to work with. Uh, you know, there's this like common belief or saying that when Christopher Columbus was sailing to the New World and the Indians were looking out at the water, they had never seen a ship before. And so that they can see the ripples in the water and they were trying to understand what was happening, but they actually couldn't see the ship because they have never seen a ship nor heard the word ship. And so their reality, their eyes literally could not perceive it. Okay. And so we want to, we want to begin by at least, you know, how do we transform? Well, we start asking questions. We get curious. People who are so sure of their reality are stuck in the matrix of their mind. Now, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They're living their lives, doing what they're doing. However, we want to recognize that if we don't call things into question, then we can't widen our view of reality. And really what we want to get to with these next layers, these next levels of where do we get to and how do we do that? We want to start understanding our true nature. Because if we ever want to be liberated and free in our own lives, in our own reality, then we get to actually experience our true nature. Now, how are you going to experience your true nature when you're taking the conditioning of your mind and the only way that you can perceive yourself, others, the world, etc., is through these five senses? So if you've never taken the time to question that your five senses are not a great test for reality, boom, there you have it. You know, you can at least start with that and be like, hey is what I'm seeing real? And again, we know it's not. We just today scientifically can prove that you are seeing about uh, 0.000001% of reality every second. The rest of it is pretty much formulated by your conditioning, the way that your memory works and your, and your preconceived belief systems, okay? And this also, by the way, should give you a little bit compassion for yourself and others, understanding that we're all trapped in this matrix. And a lot of times when people have certain belief systems that uh, impair their judgment or maybe cause even harm to other people it is not because they are like vile human beings they are just trapped in a certain reality that has never been put into question in a way that fundamentally helped them shift and see more of reality in a different way in true nature and they're trying to deal with that right a lot of people who are in pain uh, you know no, notice in your life we loop in this pain and we often deal with the same kind of circumstances over and over and over again. Now, a lot of people say this is suffering. We have learned that this is not suffering. This is actually how the quantum physics like matrix works. It, it has to loop in order to give you opportunity after opportunity to basically like clear your karma, learn from that experience and grow in ways that your soul came here to grow. If it didn't do that, and it was always a novel experience. You would never learn anything at all. It, there, it, like humans learn through contrast and repetition. And so we actually need a mechanism that allows for things to loop in our system until we can literally clear it from. And these next two layers that Elon's going to mention here is the process of beginning to actually clear those things so that we can get out of those loops and get out of those matrices. Yeah. So when you're in, in phase one of your journey, right? Like exciting, everything's amazing, amazing, amazing. And then inevitably whether it takes you a year to get there five years to get there or like guy and i because we're really slow 15 years to get there speak for um, yourself i'm on an accelerator we you you begin to find the edges of that mindset work and what i mean by that is this i'll give you an example how many of you guys and just let me know in the comment box, how many of you guys have worked on something? It could be a relationship. It could be your health. It could be your money situation. And you've done a lot of work. Like you've invested time, money, energy into it. Right. And you figured out things. If I said to you, Hey, you know, why is it that you keep having this self-sabotage or this pattern show up? You're like, Oh, well, because you know, when I was three years old, this happened to me and mom did this or dad didn't do that. And then this happened. And so now to protect myself, I have the, and you can give me the whole fucking roadmap, all of it. And yet that thing is still running the show. 
Like maybe the gaps in between of how often he kicks, maybe those got longer. But inevitably, something's going to happen in your life and that same part that is afraid of being alone or afraid of being abandoned, the same part that feels like it's stupid, the same part that feels like it's a failure, the same part, all of it like just keeps popping its head over and over and over. How many of you guys, just let me know in the comment box, uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, so Alex is saying, yep, understood it all, but nothing ever changed uh, until I found you too. It's like, and, and what happens is you, you hit that part again, and then what do you do? The mind's like, all right, we need more information. We need more information. We need that next seminar. We need that next program. We need that next code. And you do that thing again. And because again, it's in the mind work, you keep bumping up against that same thing. And so what happens is if I can kind of like draw this map, you know, when you start your personal development journey, it's like a meteoric rise. And then this part that I'm talking about right now, it's like it, you can feel that begin to plateau. Taper. And as it begins to plateau with the plateau, because you've been rising and everything has been going, as this happens, it starts to kick up all these other patterns of I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not worthy. Everyone is better than me. This just doesn't work for me, whatever it is. And now the plateau is no longer a plateau, but it actually begins to dip back down because all the stuff that you did before you are now doubting. You think you wasted your time, your money, your energy. You think it's all bullshit. And from that lens, you start to look for other things. But because you're already in that place, it becomes very difficult. Yeah. So I see some of you guys are like resonating with this. And again, I know I'm kicking up some stuff. I Here's the good news. Like, and the more of you guys that respond to this to let other people know, like, I want you to get, this is the human experience. It's not that you did anything wrong. In fact, I will offer, and I don't think I've ever said this in this way, I will offer that if you don't feel that part, then you're not actually on the journey because yeah. it is an impossibility to have a meteoric rise like this forever if you were just to do mindset work. It's an impossibility because at some point you're going to hit that wall. You're going to hit that edge and that disappointment is going to kick up. And what we're going to talk about next in this like level two is as long as awareness is stuck in here and awareness is doing the mindset work from here, all you're getting is great information on how to manage and understand how things happened and then manage your way out of them. Like, manage your anger, manage your stress, manage your heartache, manage your disappointment, ma manage yourself, right? But if you actually tune in, was any of that actually healed? And by when I say healed, I mean like fully completed and eradicated out of your system. Yeah. You are liberated from it. Yeah. I love that word. You are liberated from it. Like mindset cannot liberate you from that place because those aspects of yourself don't live up here. This is like the computer that processes all of it, right? But all of those traumas, all of those heartbreaks, all of those sad moments, they live in here. And your mind has no access to it. It can under, it can look down and understand it. It can make sense of it all, but it can't shift anything. So now, right? So phase one, it's like we go up. Now we're starting to kind of plateau and then even go down. And then how do you get into a phase two? How do you go from that dip to here? And that, I just want you guys to know, that's what Guy and I have invested the last six plus years of our lives exploring. So if you are in that state, which I just spoke about, first, I want you to get you're not alone. Second, I want you to get like, 
wonderful. It's a human process. And third, I would invite that you even found us here because your soul already knows that it's time to change the trajectory and go back up. Okay. And so I'm going to share with you what we have found. To switch from level one to level two, awareness needs, to, you must learn how to shift awareness outside of the mind and then allow that awareness to sit inside the body. Michael Singer calls it the seat of awareness. This, my friends, is where healing actually takes place. Mm -hmm. When you combine awareness with the body, like you can actually shift awareness into, and if this, that voice in your head, we call the subtle mind, you begin to practice subtle body. Mm -hmm. And as awareness sits here, you can learn tools that actually help you heal all of those aspects that have kicked up all of those patterns. So instead of like a doctor where you're like, doctor, my toe hurts. And he's like, here's medicine for your toe to stop hurting without ever getting curious about like, why does your toe hurt? Maybe your toe hurts because there's a misalignment in your hip or there's a nerve in, that's pinched in your back. Why are we dealing with the toe if the thing that's constantly causing the toe has nothing to do with the toe? And so mindset is almost this like you're dealing with the symptom. You're not really dealing with the root cause. Healing awareness actually goes and starts to deal with the root cause. So we're going all the way back. No understanding necessary just to witness these places. And once you can bring awareness out of mind and into body, you now transition yourself into phase two. Can we, can this can is we called pause? level two awareness, right? Yeah. So in the can awareness effect, this is level two. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And so I just want to let you guys know if you are like, you know, because obviously we're, we're talking about it and around it. If you want to put this on the court, you actually want to do this practice that Elon's talking about. You want to... You know, a lot of you guys have done a lot of mindset work. It's fine if you haven't. You can still apply this work regardless, okay? We, we find that the marriage of the two is the most powerful kind of cocktail that you can get. And you can certainly go right and do the energetic awareness work as well to liberate energy in the body and metabolize it. If you want to learn how to do that and you don't have this resource yet, type meditation in the comment box. And someone from our team will actually send you what we call our active healing meditation. P.S. Even if you hate meditation, even if you think you suck at it, yeah. do this meditation. Try it. This is not this is not a meditation about learning how to quiet your mind or sitting in silence with nothing happening and just listening to the wind. It's not it's not that. And it's important that you understand that because a lot of people go into meditation with the idea that the whole thing is about quieting the mind. Here's the truth. Elon and I have been meditating for about a decade. We've been doing about our work for about. 20 years I've sat in silent meditation for, for 10 straight days. The mind doesn't just quiet itself down. It doesn't work. And even to this day, Elon and I are, are very proficient practice meditators. There are days where you sit down and the mind is not quiet. And if you sit down and your first thing is like quieting the mind, you're going to be very upset that your mind is not quiet because the mind doesn't care about your desires. <laughs> it has its own agenda. It has, it's its own mechanism and it's, it's playing a role. It's a way that we process life. Beautiful. So a lot of you guys are asking for it. You'll see Corey, Sarah, Tobias, or Jasmine scouring the chat, chat boxes here. They will come be in contact with you and send you some resources. There's actually also a 30 day meditation challenge going on inside the group right now. And even if you didn't get started on the day of, it's perfectly fine. You know, like, don't do the meditation challenge because you're like, I need to compete with people. Like, it, it's about cooperating with yourself. Okay? And we do have some cool prizes coming up here on June 9th. And, again, if you need information on that, just, just, <laughs> that's awesome, Stevie. Um, let us know and stuff like that. But that's how you can apply it. And here's the thing. If you apply meditation with an expectation, you're going to get nowhere. Let me say that again. If you apply, you can quote me on this one. If you apply meditation with an expectation, that rhymes, yes, you are going to get nowhere. You want to sit agendaless. You don't even know what, you don't even want to know why you're sitting today. Yeah. There's, ju there's just you coming to sit. 
let the work reveal itself to you. Let the work dictate why you're sitting in the first place. Because when the outcomes begin, when, aware, when your own awareness begins teaching your awareness, and it's not Elon and me dictating a, a map or a territory for you to understand, although they're useful, don't get me wrong, Elon and I consistently have worked with teachers for 20 years. We think it's crazy to not work with a teacher, right? You might disagree, you might agree, but no one in their right mind can see themselves the way that a person who's subjective about your life can mirror your life back to you. It's crucial. And we can tell you even from energetic healing, we've, we've tried, God, we've tried healing on our own, doing our own practices. There, You can do it. Don't get me wrong. It works. And there's a limitation to healing yourself by yourself because we don't live on an island in this world. And our bodies are biologically built for connection. How many of you guys know that you 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 seek connection? You You need it. Right. Like there's a reason when we put people in isolation in prisons, they go batshit crazy. There's a reason when you see homeless people on the street without connection that they have to form another persona to literally talk to in order to try to establish some kind of connection within their system. OK, so because of that, there's certain healing work that can be done individually. And then there's healing work that has to be done with another person present, there's healing work that has to be done in a group setting because these are the layers that huma humanity deals with and we have trauma at every single layer. And so if you have trauma at every layer in order to liberate and free that trauma, you also have to do the work at that layer, right? Like, I don't know about you guys, but like, <laughs> I remember doing like a lot of relationship work for like six years and I was like, oh my God, next time I'm gonna be in a loving relationship, I'm gonna fucking crush this thing. And then I got in a relationship and it's like, I did no work at all. Why? Because I wasn't in a relationship. I couldn't do that work. I, I had understanding, but it wasn't applied wisdom. Exactly. And wisdom has exactly. to be applied, right? Yeah. It has to be applied. I had to be with somebody grappling with my programming, with their programming, seeing how things arise, and then looking, how do I get to clean that up now and, and liberate myself so I can have a more loving relationship? And that's an ongoing process like it is for all of us, right? We're all evolving, growing, and learning. Last thing here before I hand it back to Elon is I want to say at, at that level one, um, again, it doesn't matter, level one, location one, layer one, it, these are all interchangeable. Um, and again, we're just naming it. It doesn't even mean that these levels truly exist. Um, there is a sense at that like less conscious level, less aware level that life is happening uh, to you. It's like you are a kite in the wind. You're kind of a victim of your circumstances. Everything that changes that doesn't fit into your realm of your expectations just creates upset in your life. And so the response from that level is to try to create and control more of life. And I don't know about you work? guys. Huh? How does that work? Yeah. And, and, and here's the truth. We all know this kind of like, you know, in, in, in intuitively is that like you can't control life. You just you just can't. The one thing, and even that, I'm not exactly sure, is like the one thing you can get good at is how are you going to respond to what's happening? But I can tell you even the responses that you have biochemically, you're not in control of those either. They just happen. If like some, if something, if something goes down in the room and it creates upset for you, you're going to be upset. The real question again, and what you do have some sense of control over, and I hesitate to use that word, is can you now work with what's arising in the system? instead of squashing it, burying it, trying to manipulate it. Like that's not being present. That's not the truth of your reality in that moment. You might have you might have really good systems for these things, ways that you manage it, like Elon talked about. However, in essence, when you're managing things, what you're really doing is you're bypassing the actual experience that you're having. People call that compartmentalizing. Oh, I'll compartmentalize my anger with my spouse to later. Cool. Tell me how that works and let me know that that doesn't show up later in ways that you didn't want it to when they do the next thing that throws you off and then you explode much bigger and you're like, where did that come from? Well, it's like that thing that you didn't deal with that you compartmentalized or managed, right? So it's like we are having an experience. It is a human experience. We are animals with biochemical, intense emotional responses. And until we understand how to elevate our consciousness to a higher state of awareness that is outside of the conditioned mind, we will always be stuck in this matrix of this conditioning. And that's what truly our work is all about, is showing people how to locate higher states of consciousness so that as those situations arise, as those emotions and feelings and sensations and distortions arise, 
is that you you build a confidence and capacity, a truly a new foundation in your awareness to sit with and experience those things from let's let's call it like your spiritual self instead of your small human self. And until you've located that that bigger mind, that bigger awareness, you're always going to be stuck in that game. I don't care how much information you have. I don't care how many books you've read. I don't care how many Tony Robbins courses you've gone and done or whatever else that you've gone and did. Like all that is good and will serve you as you clear things from your system and have to integrate a new life into you. Like all that stuff is fundamentally beyond important to know and to have that basis in. And, and that's why we actually teach both, right? Because we do think they're both important. However, if you are truly here in this lifetime and here right now watching and listening to this, we don't think it's a coincidence, you're here most likely to create more well-being in your system, to fundamentally change how you feel internally, which is to feel more safe in your body, in this world, in your spirituality, in your communication, in your self-expression, right? And to connect with people in an authentic way. And if that's what you're here for, then we have not been able to find anything outside of the realm of energy and awareness that allows for people to do that. And, and something Guy said before about, you know, doing this work on your own. Look, if I could tell you that you could do these practices on your own and get there, I would. I, I would love to get to that place where I can just show someone, hey, like, go do these things and here you go. The truth of the matter is this you, however much work you've done, you are still a product of a human body. The human body is connected to a human mind. The human mind has been tasked from a very, very young age to protect you from all of these things that you have been running away from for decades. And so even when you do mindset work and you, you, how many of you guys know when you like, you found that door, you know, the door you need to walk through, right? Like think of maybe a relationship or something that has to do with your self-worth or something that has to do with like the part that self sabotage you know, the door, it's not new. You can guide me to it. You can tell me I've walked to this, but the opening it and walking into that darkness of the unknown that's where the mind's like, are you kidding me? Oh, hell no. This is what I've been protecting you from for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You want to walk there? Are you mad? Mm -hmm. Right? And so here's the difference. Like when we do work with people, I want you to imagine. So there's that scenario. You trying to walk through that door by yourself. Or imagine this. Me and Guy holding your hand, walking next to you on either side. Coaches, people in the community everyone walking surrounding you walking through that same door mm -hmm. do you think you're going to have way more courage yeah. to to be able to walk through that knowing that you know what i'm not alone this time this time i got friends family support like i don't have to do this alone and that is where we create these two incredible healing like the the incredible healings happen because we're finally able to walk through right every every spiritual text you've ever read. The only way out is through. Yeah. Right. And, and mindset tries to get you to this promised land by finding all of these like ninja cheat codes, you know, but like it doesn't <laughs> work because the only way out is through. So until you walk through that door into that darkness, into that unknown, you're just going to keep looping these things over and over. And so back to the levels, right? It's like, once awareness can shift out of here and into here, we can begin to witness through awareness what is actually the body communicating. Because in the same way that the mind remembers everything, so does your body. And when the body gets hit with a certain energetic charge, it's going to clamp up in a certain way to try to protect you. And this is what the mind is actually responding to. So when you're doing mindset work, I want you to get, it's amazing. And it's always in response to the reaction, never to the actual thing that is reacting. So at level two, now we begin to bring that in there. And you start to really shift into like, wow, this world is really happening for me, not to me, but for me. And you begin to witness all of these things that happen on the inside and liberate from your system 
by the virtue of you witnessing them with this agendaless awareness. Now, I know you guys are probably, we're throwing a lot at you today and that's okay. This is really for you to kind of map where you are, right? The how-to, I don't want you to get fixated on. The how-to is what we teach in our Awareness Effect Academy. We're not going to go into that today, but this is like the map. So you can kind of sense of like, oh, wow, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm stuck. This is why I'm feeling this, et cetera. Now, once you start to shift awareness into here, that dip that you might be experiencing begins to shift and it starts to shift and it goes up. And once you can marry the mindset work with the energetics, with the awareness effect, it's like napalm on an open fire. You will begin to grow so quickly as you begin to cultivate these practices. Okay. And now you get to reach into another level. There's actually four. I'm going to touch on four for just a second, but here's where things get really cool. So the, the first step is we call it like level two is like the self to self healing practices, right? This is the, the self to self. The next level is once you get a really good understanding and a really good felt sense of this, what you are then able to do is hold some awareness here and now begin to shift awareness out into your environment. So for anyone that is here because you want to make a difference, you want to make a difference with your kids, you want to make a difference with your husband, you want to make a difference at your workplace, you want to make a difference with your family or in community or whatever it is. Once you get a good sense of this and you begin to liberate these things and there's practices of self-love and compassion, which bring more peace and ease into your system. If you are a vibrational frequency that is walking out through this world, then guess what happens as you begin to change, like, like with little dials, the frequency that you are in the world, that's going to start to impact people. You ever walk into a home where people are just like stressed or an environment where everyone in that environment is stressed and you cannot help but be sucked into that environment where you're like, I don't even know why, but I just, I feel like all like, Ugh. versus if you walked into a room, maybe you've gone to a, a seminar or you've been to like a meditation training or a yoga training and these beautiful places and you literally walk into this place and it's like, ah. Oh. Like your entire system, just you feel it down regulate. You can be that transmission for people in your life. That's what begins to happen at level three. You can't get to level three though, until you understand me. Until you can feel that distinction of like me, not me. You can't impact that environment because everything is whiplashing you. You don't even know what's yours, what's theirs. Am I working on mine? Am I working on theirs? You have no idea. And when you start to shift into that level three awareness, where awareness can be here and there, now your environment begins to shift. Okay. This is where things get really, really cool. Like, I mean, stories abound from our clients, uh, some of who are here. The, the level of mind blown magic that shows up in your life is it, it doesn't even like... You sit there and the mind is trying to process what is happening. For example, like you'll be with someone in your life that the relationship has always been very, very challenging, like always just combative, but you've worked on your parts, right? Like you've healed and liberated those parts and you walk into that room and that person is a completely different person, like the words coming out of their mouth is different. The way they talk to you is different. The things they offer you is different. You think that you're getting punked. You're like, you're like, am I getting pranked right now? What is happening? Who is this person? Why are they? What do they do? And it's all because you. Not because you had to have like some difficult conversation with them and be like, you know what, mom, every time you say this to me, blah, 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 this happens. And right, like you don't even have to do any of that anymore. They just shift as you begin to shift. So now you're on this like parabolic rise because every time you do a meditation, not every time maybe, but like very quickly, new things open up, 
we call the awareness effect. It's like, it's almost like opening an aperture where you just start to perceive more and more and more, more of what's happening in here, more of what's happening out there, more of what's happening in the energetic world, in the field, and everything becomes, this is kind of what level three is. It's not just happening to you, it's happening through you. It's like you are the frequent frequency vibration that things are moving through and starting to paint your reality. And this is where things become so like, you know, Alex was saying like unexplainable. It, 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 it is so beyond what your mind because because your mind works in linear fashion. This does not work in linear fashion. This is like, I was here, I am broke. Now I upload like I upgraded to this other timeline and in this timeline all my money worries are concerned are and i just concerned. want i just want to say i want to say about that it's because the conditioned mind is a linear mechanism but reality itself is quantum in nature right so we have quantum physics and then regular physics because physics is measurable in a conditioned mind reality but when you get beyond that you start going into a quantum realm and you got to get that awareness and this is you can literally prove it to yourself is free of time and space yeah. there's no location to it at all and so it, it's free to move faster than the speed of light anywhere into the universe that's perceivable, right? Which is really to say infinite time space. And so because of that, kind of like, uh, you know, Alex is saying here, she's saying I'm manifesting everything within days, clients showing up out of nowhere, making more money, working less, I could go on. It, you know, like, again, I want to just say what we typically say here, which is these were, you know, a lot of times you go into programs and they'll tell you these results are not typical. You have to do this and this. Like here, it's about consistency, right? Like if you want to master something, guess what? You got to be consistent. You guys can come to our weekends. It'll be an amazing experience. Alter your life for sure. And if you want it to be sustainable, like guess what? Like the people who are really getting a lot from it, like anything else, they got to be consistent with it. However, the consistency we're talking about here is not great effort on your part. We're talking like five to 10 minutes a day of doing anything. If you can't find five, if you can't find five to ten minutes a day to do something in your day that's going to build a new habit, then I'm just going to tell you flat out, you're not committed to transformation. You're not really committed to anything. You know, maybe you're committed to the suffering, and you got to get and you got to get real with yourself about that. It's like if I'm not making any habitual changes, then what I'm committed to is what I have, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, and then you should, you know, continue to do that and and whatever, you know, it is what it is, right? I don't want to go, go down this path. But my, my point here is, is that like you start accessing things that you're just aligning to in your system and then they, they can reveal themselves in a quantum fashion. Then you don't really do much. There's not really anything you specifically need to do to make that happen. But in the conditioned world, when we read books and we do the courses and you read most headlines in, in the marketing or business space, it's like, here are the five steps you need to achieve this or the three steps to do that or the seven step diet to lose 30 pounds right like the mind and, and and people know this so they take advantage of it in the marketing space and that is a way to get there but requires a lot of work and that's what we often say is that we've been misled to believe in this reality that the only way to achieve something is to work really really hard for it now i'm not putting down hard work we have evidence for people who work very very hard and achieve things however there are plenty of people in this world who work their asses off and they don't have much to show for it and we have a lot more of those people than we have of the people who are working really hard and getting there and so what we really want to get uh in our reality and in our knowingness is that your reality right is what we call reality is really an organic type of hologram right it's just like virtual reality experience and the way that it works it's literally communing with you it's actually communicating with you and the way that it communicates with you is through vibration and energy okay i don't care how much you understand through the mind you're not at vibration and you're not at energy and so what actually gets to shift in order for something to liberate and for these like magical serendipitous things to kind of magically show up in people's lives is the organic hologram is waiting for your energy to shift to align itself and to reveal itself through that vibration. And so if you are externally focused person on your circumstances, then all you ever do is change your circumstances, but that doesn't change the vibration inside of the system, not, not one iota. And that's why people end up managing a lot and feeling like they're taking on so much. It's because it's like, this is not changing, but they're taking on more and more and more out here. And it's 
fucking debilitating, right? Like the difference between being a child and an adult in our world, it's like the adult just feels like they're being compressed. The child is just living from, from purpose and vibration and frequency. Reality shows up however they want it to. In any moment, it's spontaneous and sporadic and novel and exciting. And then the adult is like, responsibility. Like there's that, right? And starts putting all this stuff on themselves and life becomes a burden. You know, it is happening to you and then some people get to it's happening for me but what we're really talking about here is an actual perceptive experience that life is actually moving through you and being generated and coming through your system as a vibration and then arising as a reality hologram that you can sense through your awareness and five senses but that that's always transferable always evolving always can change depending on your ability to move through the experiences that are arising in your system. And that's what this work is really about. It's like, how can I build confidence in my system that no matter what arises, I actually know how to feel through it, be aware of it, and learn from what this evolutionary process is really teaching my system. Yeah. So guys, again, just to recap everything that we shared, right? Levels in the beginning, shooting out of the cannon, so excited, etc. Then we kind of find that like, plateauing area we get into that little bit discouragement phase and this phase is very very important because what you choose to do from here is going to change whether you continue down or you can turn this thing and go back up if you continue doing what you've been doing which is trying to acquire more information and gather more information then chances are you're going to keep going down because all the books start sounding the same all the videos start sounding the same all the coaches start sounding the same and you're like I've heard that already. I've heard that. It doesn't make a difference. You keep seeking, 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 right? When you shift awareness from stuck in here into out here and into body is when that transition begins to happen. This is like the new playground where you begin to learn. And, and I promise once you're there, it really is this never ending scale. We, we are being taught right now, just so you guys know, with people who have meditated in the Himalayas in caves for 50 plus years, like reincarnated Rinpoches, okay? And they're constantly growing, right? There, there is no end to what awareness can be aware of. You are just tapping more and more into source. You are finding more and more who you really are, the purpose in life, the clarity in which you can just make things appear that we're not there before. So again, if this is something that you want, then again, guy, just put this up, just type in contact me. We have an amazing team, Tobias, Sarah, Jasmine, Corey, Nikki, uh, Sarah, like they're all here to provide you with anything that you need. If you type contact me, someone will be in touch. They can even, they're happy to even jump on a quick call with you and just answer some questions and see if, if what this work is, is a fit for you. Um, I just want to let you know, this is not for everyone. Like this work is for people that really are ready to have this level of healing. Like if the books are satisfying you right now, keep reading books. You know, maybe you haven't gotten to that place yet where all of a sudden this makes sense. But if any of this resonated with you and you're like, wow, this is exactly where I'm at. Take it from me. Do not wait till your 15th year to have an epiphany and go, oh shit, I've done this now for 15 years and I still keep feeling stuck because someone telling you from experience, like you can't inform your way out of this. <laughs> we, we, we hired coaches in the multiple six figures and could not get out of this, right? That doesn't mean that things that I learned didn't help me. Don't get me wrong, they helped. But that stuff kept looping and looping and looping and looping and looping. And I was like, I can't do with this anymore. I want to feel like a complete healing. I want to be liberated from. I want to move on to the next thing. I don't want to keep dealing with this thing over and over and over. So if that's you, you just type in contact me. Someone will be in touch with you. And we'll go from there. Um, we have multitudes of ways, right? You can come and test this thing out at a two-day event, which we have at the end of June. Um, and after that, we have, like I said, the three levels of the Awareness Effect Academy. And depending on where you are in your life, I promise you that one of them is the perfect fit for you to get you moving down this path. So 
We hope you guys enjoyed this. If this is your first time with us, uh, again, thank you for being here. For all of our other, you know, amazing clients, thank you guys for for being here and always sharing your perspective. I think it's more important for people to hear from you than uh, than from us. And truth truth be told, I'm I'm just going to put them out there. But if any of you guys resonate with anything that one of them said today, and you're new here, I'm sure they'd be happy to chat with you. Just reach out to them. And be like, hey, can I ask you a quick question or two? Uh, and I'm sure they will be more than happy to to answer anything that you guys want to hear. I always say better to hear from from people that have gone through the work than just from us. So uh, thank you guys as always. Thank you for being here. Um, looking forward to more and seeing you guys in person, hopefully in one of our next programs. And until then, have an amazing day. Love y'all. Have a beautiful day. Bye, everybody.